Hi, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is my 79th video on helping people study for actuarial exam 2 on financial math. In the last video, number 78, I did a problem where I derived a differential equation for the outstanding balance on a loan when you have uh, it's being paid back with a continuous payment stream. And we also solved that differential equation to find the outstanding balance as a function of time when the payment stream was assumed to be level, constant rate of payment per unit time. In this video, I want to do a related problem that I just made up uh, to that problem, 3.2.30a from Broverman's book, where we'll be solving the same differential equation for the outstanding balance, but this time this payment stream is proportional to the time elapsed. I made a um, mistake at the end of that last video that I want to just point out at the beginning of this video before we get into our problem. Here's our problem, but here's the problem from the last video. Uh, the mistake was near the end of that video down here when I was solving the differential equation and I found the constant of proportion, uh, not the constant of proportionality, but the integration constant for the solution. I forgot to put an L here, so I put that L in red right now. Um, and I also needed an L here then, and that would be the solution that would match what shows up in the problem statement up here. You can see there's an L right there. So that was a mistake. All right, here's the new problem. Once again, we have a loan of amount L, a constant interest rate of I per period with, with equivalent force of interest delta, which is the natural log of one plus I. The payment stream is continuous still for N periods. The rate of payment is now proportional to T. Two things to do. First, confirm that this constant makes it so that this equation right here is true. And you want this equation to be true so that the payment stream does cause the loan to be paid off by time n. And then the second thing is assuming that we've got once again this proportionality to t with our payment stream and assuming we've got the differential equation from the last video right here which we do and this initial condition use knowledge about solving differential equations integrating factors in this case to show that this formula is true for the outstanding balance as a function of time and you can use that formula to, to graph it and find values of the outstanding balance. And probably the most important qualitative thing to realize here is that when you graph such a function, and I did this on my own for typical values, say L is 100,000, delta is maybe 0 0.05, and is 30, um, you get a graph that does, it's not always decreasing. It actually increases at first before it decreases. Its value here is L, its value, um, it comes down to the t-axis when t is n. And that should make intuitive sense because with such a function, a payback function, at first you're not paying the loan off very rapidly and so interest is accruing faster than the principal is being paid down at first before this gets high enough to now start to cause the function to come back down. So that's pretty interesting and I'd encourage you to graph it on your own too. But now let's do the problem at hand. Uh, before confirming this in part one, let's do an antiderivative a helpful indefinite integral that's going to help us in a couple spots on this problem is to do this one. Integrate t times e to the negative delta t. And you'd want to do that by parts. I'd, I'd encourage you to maybe pause the video and try it on your own. And if you're back, you can see how I'm doing it. I'm letting u equal t, and therefore du is dt. Letting dv be e to the negative delta t dt, and therefore by integrating that I get v to be negative 1 over delta e to the negative delta t. The integration by parts formula is u times v minus the integral of v du, and so this becomes u times v is the product of these two things. I get negative t over delta e to the negative delta t minus the integral of the product of these two things the minus sign there and the minus sign here make a plus. I can bring this 1 over delta in front times the integral of e to the negative delta t. And doing that second integral gives another minus sign and another factor of 1 over delta. So I get minus 1 over delta squared e to the negative delta t plus c for your general antiderivative. So let's use that now. Um, let's set the integral equal to L and solve for M. Okay, and we'll get this thing for M. 
uh, technically, logically speaking, I, it would maybe make more sense to use this value of m to confirm the integral, but let me think of it in terms of a solving kind of context. You know, if you didn't know what m was, you'd have to do the solving. ks is m times s, and v to the s, v is the uh, present value discount factor, it's the same as e to the negative delta. So this becomes e to the negative delta times s. Using the antiderivative we just found and also multiplying by m, we get that this is m s over delta e to the negative delta s minus m over delta squared e to the negative delta s. We don't need the c. s goes from 0 to n. Now plug in s equals n first. We get negative m n over delta e to the negative delta times n minus m over delta squared e to the negative delta n. Subtract what we get when we plug in 0. s is 0 makes this 0. e to the 0 is 1, so this becomes a minus um, m over delta squared. We can, let's see, factor out an m. I think that probably would be good to do. And I think I'm also going to replace replace the e to the negative delta n by v to the n, since you see a v to the n up here. So let's see, we got the 1 over delta squared there. We For here we have a minus n over delta v to the n. And from this term, the m is factored out, we have a 1 over delta squared v to the n. This is starting to look good. I want to solve this equation for m. Be good to get a common denominator here of delta squared. Yeah, this is looking pretty good here. Oh, I'm going to need another delta there because there's only a delta there. Yeah, now just solve for m. Multiply both sides by delta squared. Divide both sides by this thing. m is, don't forget about the l, l times delta squared over 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 plus n delta times v to the n. And that does match this, okay, with no mistakes, it looks like. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so that's part one. And again, logically speaking, we should go the other way. We should confirm that when we plug that in for m, you get l, but of course the logic will go the other way. What about part two now? We want to solve this differential equation with this initial condition when kt, that's a kt here by the way, is m times t, where m would have to be the same constant that we found in part one, but I won't bother writing that in there. As, as I did in the last video, just to um, save a little writing, I'll call the balance function b instead of ob. The differential equation looks like this. And again, I won't bother plugging in what m is. It does equal this right here. And that's something that should be kept in mind. The initial condition b of 0 equals l. Once again, we'll solve this with the method of integrating factors. Rewrite it like this. Uh, take the coefficient of b and make it um, the integrand for this function here. Mu, the integrating factor, is defined to be e to the integral of whatever that function is. It's a constant function in this case, which is nice. This simplifies to e to the negative delta t, which is the same, by the way, as v to the t, if you like. Um, it's a factor, an integrating factor. I now multiply both sides by that. I get e to the negative delta t dB dt minus delta e to the negative delta t times b equals negative mt e to the negative delta t. We will need the integral we found up here in purple once again. This is done so that this thing is easy to integrate. By the product rule, this is the same as the derivative of e to the negative delta times t times b of t. If you've never seen the method of integrating factors before, uh, this choice of mu is what makes this 
left side e easy to integrate. If you chose something different from you, you might get something difficult to integrate. But it works out nicely because of the product rule. So now we integrate. Integrate. Left side is easy to integrate. I just get what's what we're taking the derivative of e to the negative delta t times b, or b of t if you prefer, which is going to be the same as ob sub t. Right hand side's a little trickier to integrate than the last video. Again, I can use this up here. I have a negative sign here and also an m, so I can use this antiderivative but multiply it by m and make these negatives positive. I can still keep the c as a, or an ordinary c. I don't need to change it to minus c times m. You know, it's an arbitrary constant anyway. So what I will get is mt over delta e to the negative delta times t plus m over delta squared e to the negative delta t plus c, the integration constant. So again, that comes from here, multiplying these two terms by negative m because we have a negative m right there. Now divide or multiply both sides by e to the positive delta t. The general solution of the differential equation is mt over delta times 1 plus m over delta squared times 1 when I multiply that by e to the positive delta t plus c e to the positive delta t. The initial condition is that b of 0 is L, and that allows me to solve for c. c is going to be L minus m over delta squared. And now I can write my particular solution to the initial value problem, b of t, which again is the same as ob sub t, is, I can write, I can out of these two terms, I can factor an m over delta squared out. If I do that, I'm left with a delta t plus 1, looking right here again. And then I got c, which is l minus m over delta squared times e to the delta t. And looking up here, I hope I didn't make a mistake. It is the same as this function, and yes, no mistakes this time. Okay, that looks good. All right, so I think I'll do one more video like this where I will consider another payment stream. Um, and you can, you can consider lots of different payment streams, and maybe you wouldn't get a nice formula for the outstanding balance, but if you've got technology, you should at least be able to graph it. But you always do want this condition to hold.